important phone call of your life to Moscow. Because if you don't, you may never have a chance to make another one. Does he fully understand? Yes. And he still thinks the Kremlin won't move? I mean, does he really believe that? I don't know. I guess it was a ploy. I think they'll move. I don't know. I tried, Jack. God knows I tried for you, for Ethel, the kids, for everyone. Out of the uh, ten, uh, what are the chances? Six, they'll move. Uh, three, they won't. And the one left? We get blown from here to hell. The blockade of Cuba today took on a personal twist for President Kennedy. The Lebanese freighter Marukla was intercepted by the United States Navy destroyer Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., northeast of Nassau. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy will be deeply interested in this turn of events, for on February 4th, 1946, he sailed in the destroyer from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, as a volunteer. That's my ship. I thought uh, I was supposed to be the war hero. President Kennedy has a model of the destroyer in the White House. Joseph P. Kennedy... Now, where is that ship? The eldest Kennedy son in the fish room. Ambassador well, let's get it out of there. What's my uh, ship doing in the fish room? Well, as a matter of fact, as a uh, commander-in-chief, it is my ship. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Jeff is demanding that we dismantle and remove all of our missile sites in Turkey. Mr. President, those sites are of no great military value. Yes, I know that, and so does he. But I will not allow Bruce Jeff to put me in a position of threatening the Western Alliance. If we pull out of Turkey now, everyone else will think that we're going to do the same thing to them. So, at this point, it could go either way. How many ground troops do we need to invade? 60 to 100,000, sir. I right, call up the 24 troop carrier squadrons of the Air Force Reserve. Yes, Mr. President. Is the Army ready in Florida? Yes, Mr. President. And the Marines? They're ready to go, sir. Very well. I would suggest you call your families and uh, tell them if you can't get home in the next 48 hours, you will notify them as to your whereabouts when Washington is evacuated. And I would not tell them that uh, anyone anywhere in this country is safe, because no one is. this program to bring you this important bulletin from Radio Moscow. In order to eliminate as rapidly as possible the conflict which endangers the cause of peace, to give an assurance to all people who crave peace, and to reassure the American people who also want peace, as do the people of the Soviet Union, the Soviet government, in addition to earlier instructions on the discontinuation of further work on weapons construction sites, has given a new order to dismantle the arms <laughs> in Sounded pretty good to me. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. President, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and uh, thank all of you very much. Thank God for Bobby. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we may all have uh, earned our salaries these past few years. <laughs> they will be dismantled. I give you my word. Again? <laughs> you are a hard man. I'm uh, paid to be, Mr. Ambassador. The Soviet Union is a word that they a nuclear war. You mean you haven't started one? Are you not pleased with what we've done? I'm uh, 
I'm just reflecting on what you might have done. I will not intrude on your reflections, but I have been instructed to pass on from Chairman Khrushchev his personal good wishes to the president. I'll tell him. And Chairman Khrushchev also sends for the first time his good wishes to the president's brother. You mean uh, the attorney general? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll uh, pass them on to him, too. Oh, uh, just a few well-placed bombs will wipe them all out, Mr. President. Who said that, a general? One of your generals. One of my generals? That's right. Maybe this is the night I should go to the theater. Well, Ford's Theater, Lincoln, and assassination Yes, attempt. Ford's Theater, and you'll go with me. All right, I'll go with you. It's a deal. It's a deal. Congratulations. Congratulations to you, Bobby. You are the sixth president I have known, and the first I've had to advise upon personal morality. Millions of young Americans look to you as an example of high moral standards. We can disguise failings, but... Excuse me, Mr. Hoover. If you are leveling an accusation at me, then make it specific. I am making a request that you, sir, cease any contact, physical, or of any other kind with the woman. She is intimate with the Mafia. Well, I've been criticized by your brother for not investigating organized crime, but you, sir, are intimate with this woman who shares a bed with several of this country's worst criminals. Now, just a minute. I object and I resent your insinuations. If you have any evidence, let me see it. If contact ceases entirely, Evidence will be destroyed when I retire. That's all I have to say. I don't wish to compromise you, sir. I ask you not to compromise yourself, Mr. President. If I may go, sir. Yes. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Hoover. You're welcome. Fair has to stop, Jack. It has. You, uh, you want me to get the evidence? No, I'll let him keep it. It's like playing poker, and I think he's bluffing. He's only powerful in his way if he keeps his uh, dirty secrets to himself. The hell with it. We will use the dogs if they start draw drawing knives again and throwing rocks. We will use the holes if it becomes necessary to stop the mob. Even as Chief of Police Connors speaks, the fire hoses blast down the Negroes. Women and children are victims. Many have been seriously, some fatally wounded. Violence is everywhere, in the streets, on the sidewalks, in the air. And at night, fear stalks the city. And everywhere people are asking, what will be done? What can be done? When will this spiral of hate finally cease? All but this hate here, and still I go to Europe. How do I get through to the people of West Berlin? What do I say? What in the name of God do I say? Berlin, Germany. Over one million greeted President Kennedy's arrival at the divided city. Waving, cheering, and tearful crowds swept forward outside the city hall. The President's speech was an overwhelming emotional climax. To tumultuous cheers, he declared he too was proud to be a Berliner. All men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. Therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. On the Friedrichstrasse at Checkpoint Charlie, the president saw a small gathering of East Berliners standing a quarter of a mile away. They too cheered, Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy. And now, I have the pleasure to present the moral leader of our nation, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I have a 
dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of oppression, sweltering with the heat of injustice, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. say to him I have, a dream I have a dream too I can't think of a better phrase or, or a better delivery he's magnificent little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers I have a dream today Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring. From the hiking Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, let freedom ring. From the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado, 